Our final speaker of the session is Dr. John Anton, who is uh, from Virginia Tech Transportation Institute. I will get his presentation up here. Thank you. Thank you for sticking it out this far. We're almost done. So I'm going to be talking about a validation of the low mileage bias using naturalistic dri uh, driving study data. I'd like to <clears throat> excuse me, acknowledge my colleagues that you can see all at uh, VTTI. And I'd also like to acknowledge our sponsor, the National Surface Transportation Safety Center for Excellence. So we've all seen this curve before, or at least similar ones. This one indicates the relative at-fault crashes to not at-fault crashes across the age spectrum. And it shows a sort of this classic pattern of seniors crashing more than middle-aged drivers um, or being responsible for more uh, crashes than middle-aged drivers, almost uh, approximately the same uh, rate as we might see with young, teen, inexperienced drivers. So this is the overall picture. But this, uh, this series of graphs shows a different picture. So if we're looking instead of per mile driven, now we're looking at per licensed driver. And we still see similar patterns looking per person. Now instead of the senior drivers being you know, well overrepresented, senior drivers produce fewer crashes per driver, per licensed driver. And this kind of holds across these different crash categories. So, you know, how do we explain that? Well, obviously we explain that because senior drivers tend to drive less and we see a pattern like this with it uh, mileage peaking at around age 40 and then more or less kind of steadily decreasing. So there's lower mileage. So what are the implications of that? So uh, we're going to start to talk about this notion of the low mileage bias. Uh, Janke, as far back as 1991, noted that the relationship between crash rate and mileage may not be linear. And so the term low mileage bias was coined by Hakamiz Blomquist in 2002. And this is the idea that it's really only those drivers who drive the lowest annual mileage who are responsible for that increase that we see here. So in this particular graph um, take, taken from Langford and his colleagues, um, some of whom are here in the room today with us, uh, you know, we see that the m m High mileage drivers and uh, moderate mileage drivers do not demonstrate that pattern, but it's only these low mileage drivers that demonstrate this sort of classic or what we used to think of as classic uh, pattern. Now, now this has been replicated by others in different countries, uh, mostly using self-report data, and it's also been uh, questioned in the literature by others, um, primarily based on that fact that it was mostly based on self-report data. So, how many times have you crashed in the last period of time and how far did you drive? And people, you know, it's often notoriously poor at reporting those things for a variety of reasons. So I think we could all agree and a lot of researchers agree that there's a need to examine this using objective data. So hey, that's, that's a segue, objective. So um, our goal in this study was to do just that, to use objective data the, from Sharp II naturalistic driving study to evaluate this notion of the low mileage bias. So we're gonna, uh, we have the ability to look at crashes objectively and mileage objectively. Uh, Sharp II, for those who don't know, uh, sounds, I think most of the people in the room know, but it's, it's a large full-scale naturalistic driving study including video, uh, 3,000 plus participants for one or two years each across six sites, and you can see those sites here. Over three years of data collection in all, some 35 million miles of data, over two petabytes of data. So methods, participants, 802 of the Sharp Two participants served as our sample in the current uh, analysis. Our criteria were uh, age 65 plus, presence of complete trip and crash records, and a minimum of six months of driving participation to avoid uh, biasing the data where someone on the first day gets in a crash and we say that that person uh, you know, crashes once per day. In, in terms of the crashes, of course, in Sharp 2, we can actually 
uh, see so essentially every crash that occurs, even very, very minor ones. And certainly many that were not police reported, as was discussed in a recent presentation. So the ones we used were uh, severity levels one through three. I won't uh, define what each of those are, but those were the three sort of top level um, or the highest level uh, severity crashes. And so the very most minor ones like curb strikes and things like that were excluded from this analysis. So we used a Poisson regression to model the relationship between crash rate and mileage. Um, event counts and total driving mileage uh, in, served as the exposure data. We used log transformed annualized mileage due to the skew in the data, and you'll see that in a minute. And of course, by annualized mileage, I just mean that uh, we, we converted to an annual amount based on whatever proportion they had actually driven. So if they drove 25,000 miles in six months of study participation, we counted that as 5,000 annualized mileage or annualized miles. miles. We, we broke this out into two different age groups, so the younger old, 65 to 74, and also the older old, 75 to 99, or 75 to as old as we could get, which was 99 in the current study. Gender, of course, male and female, and um, so let's look at some of the demographics. Uh, I'd like everyone to, it's important to memorize every number in this chart. No, let's not do that. So. Let's look at just a, a few key things. Uh, gender, it's approximately 50-50 in this sample. Uh, a total of almost uh, 7 million miles, so there's a substantial amount of data here with this uh, particular sample. And the annualized mileage by age group, the trend is as, is as expected. So if we look um, here in this column, is generally speaking going to show decreased annual, annualized uh, mileage as the age groups get older. But there's also a high variability within each group. So very low mileage and high mileage driver, higher mileage drivers in each of these older uh, driver age groups. So here we're looking at just the, what is, we're looking at those drivers who drove less than 3,000 miles per year. I'm going to come back later and figure out why we came up with 3,000. Some of the key things overall for the sample is 25%. And the lowest uh, for any particular uh, group is 17%. So in other words, these low mileage drivers exist across age and gender, at least to some reasonable proportion, and across these age groups. So it's not only the oldest old that are demonstrating this pattern. So here's a histogram of the mileage. Uh, with the most being around four to 5,000 miles per year, but you can see some stragglers, or maybe that's not the best word for them, but uh, producing you know, very high mileage out to you know, over 28,000 miles per year. So here we're actually looking at data now, uh, our crash data versus mileage, and we're seeing for the lowest mileage group, you can see this general pattern of a uh, very high crash rate, and then it tends to decrease as mileage increases. Um, so this, this, I can skip this page. This is just details of the modeling, so we can come back to that later if anyone's interested. But here are the curves that we fitted based on the Poisson regression. So the one on the left is overall crash rate, and the one on the right is at fault crashes only. And you can see that the pattern is very, very similar, essentially identical across both of those. So we see a general increase in crash rate as mileage decreases up to around roughly 3,000 miles per year. And then we see a much more rapid increase in crash rate with a decreasing mileage. And this pattern broken out by age group and, and male-female uh, holds true across the at-fault as well as overall crashes. Um, with the males, the, the older group lower than the younger, relatively younger group in both cases, and the males lower than the females in each case. So conclusions, low mileage bias is clearly evident in the Sharp 2 data based solely on objectively collected mileage and crash rate data. So not based on any questionnaires or self-reported data, but we're still finding that same, we're replicating that same finding. 
Uh, again, the model showed general monotonic increase of crash rate with decreasing annual mileage right up until somewhere between 3,000 to 6,000 miles per year, and then sharp increase in crash rate with decreased annual mileage. Holds for both overall and at-fault crashes, males, females, uh, the younger old as well as the older old. And fundamentally, this, you know, it, at least for me, and maybe for some of you, it changes our conception of what it means to be an older driver. That, that picture that I showed up front uh, sort of needs to be reevaluated in terms of these findings. And I think that's it for me. Do you have any questions? Um, very interesting. Uh, just some of these for every day that more than one crash. How would you handle that? Yes, that that would just uh, show up in their crash rate. So that that would the number of crashes would factor into the numerator, and the period of time would factor into the denominator. And but also, if somebody had more than one crash, they may have driven less because of a crash and a second crash in the, in the prior period of. Yeah, well, that, that's certainly true, but we f remember that one of the criteria for inclusion in our sample was that we got a minimum of six months of driving. And so, for example, if someone crashed in the first week, you know, that may have biased the data because it would imply that they're, based on that, their, that data from that one person, that they crashed 52 times per year. But instead, we made sure that we got a minimum of six months driving to try to be as fair and balanced as possible if you'll excuse the expression. Uh, uh, you know, I just wonder why they're driving less. So, you know, when you look at medical conditions, it's like they then only drive when they have to. Yeah, that, that's, the, that's certainly the obvious, and even you might even argue the most interesting question is why. So yeah. um, I deliberately avoided that here because that's going to kind of be the next thing that we're working on. but and that you'll hopefully be hearing about from us in the near future, but yeah, why? So some people think can, uh, you can hypothesize that it has to do with the types of roadways driven, that they're, for example, they avoid, uh, the seniors tend to avoid freeways and high-speed driving, and therefore they're driving more on roadways where, ironically enough, there are more opportunities like intersections for crashes. Obviously, it could be related to fitness to drive, which is mediating both right. the reduced mileage as well as the increased crash rate, and, and there's probably other, other uh, things that we could think about. So the yeah. next thing to look at for us yeah. is going to be to try to look at those factors and see what's the, really the underlying this. It's not truly the mileage in and of itself. It's, it's fitness or something else. Yeah, I mean, at, when, at least um, for individuals that, you know, the older drivers that are becoming unsafe drivers, families are trying to figure out ways to have them not drive without taking away the keys so then they are driving less and when they do go out they're certainly at more risk. Thank you. Any other questions? Robert. Okay. <laughs> uh, so uh, two points or two questions. One is I think you alluded to because there is some question about whether vehicle miles traveled is a true, a true exposure for risk. For example, in an urban area, maybe the number of intersections you go through, the number of, and the, and the complexity of the intersection, and that freeway driving is generally on a per vehicle mile basis safer or less risky than other kinds. Um, the other part is, well, what if, have, have you looked at the young people and do they also have the same thing? And what about the other age groups? generally true, or is it only true for older people? I think it is generally true. In this particular analysis, we did only look at seniors. And in terms of your first uh, comment, I agree that we could, you know, there's a lot of different ways we could look at this in terms of different metrics of exposure. And it's, you know, I would argue it's, it's probably not the mileage, uh, gross mileage in and of itself that's leading to this result. But that, that's what we looked at in this particular analysis was just that fact the gross mileage versus the crash rate. Any, any other questions? All right. Museum time. Thank you.